The next thing that I want to go over are the different types of stimulus. So up at the top here we have stimulus and the first one is going to be microphone. Microphone is a very nice feature to have, especially for third party. So if you have somebody that comes in, then it's a, maybe it's a couple and the husband complains, the wife doesn't speak up loud enough or the wife complains, the husband can't hear. You can do your testing, find out that the husband does have hearing loss, but instead of using the live speech mapping or the built-in files, you can have the patient face the spouse and hand them something to read and use their voice as a stimulus. This is great for the situation where somebody might get their hearing aids and they go out and they love them and they can hear everything except for when they come home and they're sitting across the dinner table from their spouse or watching TV. You can use the microphone and recreate that situation for them to create a specific program. The next thing that you can use the microphone for is hearing aid diagnostics. If you have somebody that comes in and is having trouble with their hearing aid, uh, my favorite example is whenever that patient is eating or chewing gum, there's a little chirp in the hearing aid, which is coming from the jaw movement. And as a provider, when you take that hearing aid out, you're changing the parameters to where it's hard for you to, to determine where that's coming from. So what you can do is um, go to stimulus microphone, go to your options and go to your analyzer here. And right now it's set to a one third, which is where you want it to be set doing your verification like normal. But for the diagnostics, you'll drop it down to let's say a 124, hit okay. So now you're gonna hit the green start button and have the patient try to recreate that feedback. Again, if it's jaw movement, uh, hand them a piece of candy or gum, and what'll happen If there's any type of noise coming out of that hearing aid because it is in the ear with the probe tube, um, looking at the top right hand corner here, you can put your pointer right on the tip and know that at 1189 hertz is where that, that chirping sound is coming from. So that gives you the opportunity to go into your software and make some adjustments around that frequency to see if you can't relieve some of that, uh, that feedback. But when you're all said and done with that, you just want to make sure you go back to options, analyzer, take it back to a one third.